Hey everyone, welcome to the first official screencast for AbletonLife.com. This is the first part of a series about DJing in Ableton Live, and in this part we're going to talk about setting up live for DJing. We're going to learn how to prepare and organize songs, and how to warp songs. Before we start, there are a couple things I'd like to go over first. Um, one of the first things you're going to need in order to start DJing with Ableton Live is an audio interface with two separate outputs. You're going to want one output for the headphone mix, which you'll use to cue songs in that the audience can't hear, as well as another set of outputs for the main room mix, which people will be hearing on the dance floor. Uh, some of the audio interfaces I recommend I will put up links for on the website, and you can get a feel for what's out there. Um, secondly, you're going to want to buy an external hard drive to put your songs on. This will help free up your computer and make it run faster, as well as give you just more room to work with. Uh, that way you're not always on the brink of filling up your hard drive on your laptop. So yeah, a portable USB drive is very handy when it comes to DJing with Ableton Live. Um, now that we've got those out of the way, it's time for me to show you how to set up Live for DJing. Okay, so the first screen you're going to see when you open Live is Live Session View. And uh, this is the view we're going to be using mostly for this tutorial and um, it's ideal for DJing live with this setup. And by live, I don't mean live the program. I actually mean playing out DJing live. This is the best view for that. So um, you're going to see that you're presented with two tracks. You have an audio track and a MIDI track. Um, we're going to delete the MIDI track right now um, by clicking it once and hitting delete on the keyboard. And our next step is to create three more audio tracks. and. Uh, I'm going to right click insert audio track to do that. Um, Control T is a keyboard shortcut for that, Command T for the Mac. So I'll do it that way, and then we'll do Control T here to make two more. And um, we're going to rename these now. And this is the method that I like to use. You guys don't have to do this yourselves, but um, this, is, this is how I organize my songs and create my deck A and deck B tracks. So I'll show you how to rename the tracks right now and what I name them to. Hopefully it'll make a little bit of sense to you. The first one is going to be called Library 1. This is where I'm going to store the songs at, the majority of them. And uh, well then Library 2, just so we have some more room on the screen here to actually see our library of songs that we're going to be working with. And uh, I'm going to rename this one Deck A. And the second one is going to be Deck B. And this is how uh, we're going to use these two actually for mixing our songs. So like a, a DJ mixer would have two channels on it. This is going to be channel one, channel two, or deck A, deck B, however you guys want to look at it. Um, I'm going to expand these out a little bit more just to give us some more room to, to see them visually. Because when I organize the songs here in the library channels, I want to make sure that we can read the full full title of it. And I'll bring these ones out a little bit more as well. And um, that's you do that just by holding your mouse over the middle of the channel, and there'll be a little bracket icon that shows up here. And that's pretty simple. And then just click and drag out to do that. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now we're going to set up our inputs and our outputs. Um, I was talking about a Q mix earlier and how to preview things in your headphones that the audience can't hear. Um, to get into that, I will enter the input and output mode. And on our master track, uh, you'll notice here it says cue out and master out. Cue out is what we want to assign to our second output, and uh, that's going to be under three and four here. And um, if you don't have that option for whatever reason, if it just says one, two, but you know you have an audio interface that actually does have multiple outputs, you will have to activate them under the preferences here. So here under preferences, you're going to want to go to output config, and you will activate the second set of stereo outs which I've done here already. Um, once you do that you will be able to activate this button which will put you into cue mode and if you notice here, I'll do it again so you can see it, that changes it to solo mode which allows you to solo the tracks but we don't really need that right now so we're going to change it to cue mode and what this does is when you click this headphone icon here this deck or channel will now be sending audio just into the cue outputs or your headphones. 
and uh, that way the audience can't hear it, only you can. And then when you're ready to play the song or whatever, or mix the song in, you uncheck it and that'll go back out to the club mix. So once you get your cue mix all set up, um, you can get rid of your input and output section by just clicking this button right here. Um, you don't really have much of a use for it anymore. Um, and one other thing to note is if your crossfade button is not enabled, you should enable it right now. And it's located right here. It's this little X on the bottom right hand side. And this will allow you to crossfade between deck A and deck B when a song is playing. So that's how you show and hide uh, the crossfader in Ableton Live. And um, for the next step, I'm going to show you guys how to organize your music. And uh, the two most important ways for organizing uh, your tracks is by the key that they're in, as well as the beats per minute or BPM. Um, this allows you to kind of mix them both together and not have the BPM deviate too much. And you know, you'll start Ableton will start to speed up the song to where it sounds kind of uh, unrecognizable or just uh, starts artifacting or I mean it does a good job within a certain range but you don't want to get a song that's like 90 BPM and then another one that's 180 BPM and try to mix the two together it just won't really turn out that well so usually I stay within a 10 beats per minute range so that means if I have a song that's in 130 um, you know if I have a song that's 125 I'll mix it, and that's as low as I'll go. And as high as I'll go is 135 BPM. Um, I mean, there's room for more than that, but that's the safe zone. So uh, I have some songs here um, in my file browser that I'm going to drag into the uh, library one here. Um, and live is going to warp it very fast because I've already preloaded this already. So um, if you guys experience slower loading time, it's because uh, Live hasn't cached the file yet, which um, it's already done here for me, so that's why it was so instantaneous like that. Um, so yeah, Live does auto warp songs, and um, it does that by, you know, judging peaks on the waveform here and and adding these warp markers automatically and stuff. But we're gonna do that ourselves later on. So um, the important thing to notice is right here um, under the sequence BPM. I'm sorry, I think it's segment BPM. Uh, this shows uh, how fast the song is in beats per minute. Uh, live has it set at 129.97. Um, you can round it up to 130, obviously. Um, so basically, the song is in 130 BPM. And I'm going to unwarp it because um, we're going to be trying to find the key of the song right now. Just make sure you make a note of the song being in 130 BPM for now. So the way I'm going to find the key of the song, I'm setting the playhead back to the beginning beginning of the song by the way that way when I hit play it's gonna start right at the beginning because we're gonna be finding the key of this with a, a keyboard uh, the root note first and then we're gonna find the uh, chord voicing that fits it best either uh, a minor or a major chord uh, and then you can find out whether the key is E minor E major etc cetera, etc cetera. that's the musical way of doing it uh, there is another way to do it, and that is by using a piece of software called Mixed in Key. Uh, it's amazing. I highly recommend it. It's only $58, I believe. Um, and it analyzes your songs automatically for you. It'll find the BPM as well as the key. And uh, they use a special system that they've developed, which is pretty amazing. Um, it's this wheel here, and uh, when it finds the key of the song, it automatically associates a numbering and lettering system with that key. So if the song is recognized as B major, uh, mix in key will assign it the number and letter 1B. And uh, what that means is you can mix this song, the 1B song, with uh, a 2B song, which is an F sharp major, or a 12B song, which is an E major. And also it works with the minor uh, as well, which is 1A, an A flat minor. So basically for a DJ site, you could just go around this wheel go up to a minor and then back to a major and then keep going and then go backwards if you want and then forwards again and uh, it's really limitless it's it's pretty amazing so I highly recommend mix and key software but if you can't afford it or if you have a musical ear and you just want to do it uh, the old school way and just use a keyboard to find it that's totally fine too um, I'll show you how to do that right now uh, so I'm gonna use Ableton's analog uh, to find the key of this song and this is what it sounds like